You live in an age like no other. You live in an age where there is a great falling away. You live in an age that calls good evil and evil good. You live in an age where men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. You live in an age where godly boundaries have been removed by the very fabric of society. You live in an age where the love of many has waxed cold. You live in an age where men and women worship mammon. You live in an age where mankind worships at the altar of Baal, Ashtoreth, and Moloch. You live in an age where mankind is being prepared to worship the Antichrist and accept his mark. You live in an age where men and women are lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. You live in an age where mankind worships at the altar of self, self-love, self-adoration, self-exaltation. You live in an age where unclean spirits dwell. You live in an age where principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places dwell. You live in an age where seducing spirits dwell. You live in an age where demons and the devil are present. You live in an age where Bible prophecy is unfolding before your eyes. You live in an age of deception, an age where the foundations of truth are constantly under attack. You live in an age where the very institutions that should be pillars of light are often infiltrated by shadows. Church, my dear brethren, is not exempt from this infiltration. We are witnessing a time where, within the sacred walls of our sanctuaries, there is a sinister presence that lurks. There are demons in some churches. It's not about the theatrical demon possessions we see in movies. It is not about people levitating or strange apparitions, but it is something far more subtle and far more dangerous. It's the demons of false doctrines, of distorted truths, of misleading teachings that are of a demonic origin. Do you ever sit in a pew or listen to a sermon online and feel that something isn't right, that what you're hearing just doesn't align with the scriptures? That's because there's a battle, a spiritual warfare, raging within the very walls of the church. It's an insidious war where the enemy doesn't come with pitchforks, but with smooth words and charismatic teachings leading many astray. Now I want to take you to a passage in the Bible, 1 Timothy 4.1, where it warns us, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. What we are experiencing, what many of us are witnessing, is precisely this. In this sermon specifically, when we talk about demons in the church, we aren't talking about the literal creatures, but these false teachings that are of demonic origin. They are the doctrines of devils, and they are here. It's time to open our eyes and discern the times. It's time to guard our faith, to be vigilant, and hold fast to the true teachings of Christ. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 of the King James Version says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. We see in this verse that Peter acknowledges that false prophets have always plagued Israel, even in the days of the genuine prophets of God. People would attempt to gain recognition and build up a reputation for themselves by misleading God's people, by claiming that God had given them a message for Israel, when in actuality he had not. In this very verse, Peter reveals to us, the reader, that there will come a time where false teachers will rise up amongst the ranks of Christianity, and they will teach heresy. What is heresy, you may ask? Well, heresy is anything that contradicts the scriptures, any teaching that twists the truth. Peter warns that these false teachers will do everything in their power to deceive Christians to deny Jesus Christ. This same verse then details to us how the story will end for these false teachers. Swift destruction. The warning of Peter is becoming more and more apparent in today's day and age. I have seen ministers who stand on pulpits and say that Jesus is not the only way to God. I have seen Christian ministers who attempt to discredit the life of Jesus, stating that Jesus sinned while he was on this earth. All of these statements can be described in one word. They are all heresy. Jesus is the only way to God the Father. Jesus never sinned either. He is the dictionary definition of perfect. If there are people who we should be very careful of as Christians in the world today, they are false prophets. We have been warned many times that these false prophets will come and deceive many. We were told that they will lead people astray, and it is not a lie. We can see them working in the world today. 
They are doing exactly what the Bible told us they will do. Their works are clearly in the world. They are taking people to the devil. They are taking people on the path of destruction, and they blind many of their victims with things they want to hear. If you are following a leader, a teacher, or a prophet because they are telling you what you want to hear and not what God wants you to hear, be sure you are following a false prophet. A sure sign of a false prophet or a wolf in sheep's clothing is that they please men. Galatians 1 verse 10 NIV Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. One of the works of these false prophets is that they want to be recognized as good people, so they please men instead of pleasing God. They water down the gospel message. My friend, the word of God is not there to make you feel better about yourself or improve your self-esteem. The gospel message is there for you to be saved. The gospel message is there to guide you into the kingdom of God, and the way only to do that is by first acknowledging that you are a sinner, and the wrath of God is the just reward for a disobedient sinner, and that you must be born again. In this sermon specifically, when we talk about demons in the church, we aren't talking about the literal creatures, but these false teachings that are of demonic origin. They are the doctrines of devils, and they are here. It's time to open our eyes and discern the times. It's time to guard our faith, to be vigilant, and hold fast to the true teachings of Christ. Although the demons themselves are not standing up on the pulpit preaching in these churches, their teachings are being taught by human beings. This is just as effective as the demons themselves preaching it. You know, when we speak of a doctrine, we're talking about a teaching or a set of principles. So when we come across this term, doctrines of demons, in the scripture, what we're seeing is the teachings or principles put forth by demons. Now, the word doctrine can be used in reference to the biblical teachings of a church or even a pastor. But when Paul wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.1, he was cautioning him about the ungodly, erroneous teachings that come straight from Satan and his demons. These aren't just harmless ideas, they're dangerously deceptive. Those who get ensnared by these doctrines of demons, the scripture tells us, will fall away from the faith. This means they'll depart from the foundational truths we hold dear about Christ's gospel. Let me emphasize this. Heeding to the doctrines of demons isn't just a minor misstep. It's a serious deviation from the truth of Christ's gospel. It is literally a heaven and hell issue. There are teachers in churches, in pulpits up and down this country who are teaching doctrines and beliefs literally from the very pit of hell. They are teaching things that are completely against the teachings of the Bible. In some churches, they don't even use the Bible, they don't even see the Bible as the Word of God. I recently heard a minister preach a sermon on how Jesus is one of many roads to God. Can you imagine? I recently heard a preacher attempt to twist scripture to argue, adopt and defend his sinful lifestyle. And you know what shocks me? In all honesty, it scares me. It doesn't shock me, it actually scares me. Yes, I chose the right words. What I'm about to tell you scares me, and it should scare you too. These false teachers who were preaching doctrines of demons, their churches were full, their congregations were full. Literally hundreds of people were deceived, agreeing with a pastor who was twisting scripture and promoting doctrines of devils. Now what really scared me was just how many were in their congregation. Even a light glance at the Bible would tell you that this person is teaching in error, but their churches were full. I want you to think of the worst false prophet you have ever seen, and I want you to look at the congregation and just look at the amount of people who are sitting and listening to this person who genuinely believe that they are men or women of God when they are actually wolves in sheep's clothing. It honestly scared me just the sheer volume of people who are being deceived, who are being led down the wrong path by the doctrine of devils and the ministers who preach these doctrines. The number of people in their congregation showed me several things. One, deception is real 
deception is powerful, and doctrines of devils are nothing to be played with. 2. The worst thing about deception is that those who are being deceived don't even know they are being deceived. 3. Trust the Bible. Trust the Bible and the Bible alone. Because when you have been in the ministry as long as I have, you see people who start with sound doctrine and good intentions, and somewhere along the road they begin to propagate doctrines of demons. Trust the Bible, not men. Men change, women change. The Bible never changes. If you are confused, go to the Bible. If you are lost, go to the Bible. If you are unsure about a topic, go to the Bible. Your final authority is not a man, woman, church, congregation, denomination, YouTube channel, a vision you saw, a dream you dreamed, your mother or your father. No, no, no. Your final authority, if you are a believer, is the Holy Bible. People change. The Word of God never changes. There is a rise in churches preaching doctrines of demons. In our contemporary digital era, the rise in teachings, doctrines, and spiritual movements is unprecedented. The Internet provides a platform for voices from all theological perspectives, including numerous self-proclaimed prophets. There are so many self-proclaimed miracle workers. There are so many self-proclaimed bishops. Everyone in today's era gives themselves a title. I am pastor so-and-so, or bishop so-and-so, apostle so-and-so, I am prophet so-and-so, or prophetess so-and-so. Do you know the title the Bible gives Moses at his death? Deuteronomy 34, 5 reads, So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab according to the word of the Lord. Moses, the servant of the Lord. Humble. Moses was a man who God spoke to in a burning bush. Moses is a man who turned a stick into a snake. Moses is a man who made the Nile River turn to blood. Moses is a man who called the plagues to cover the land of Egypt. Moses is a man who parted the Red Sea. Moses is a man who made bitter water sweet at Marah. Moses is a man who brought forth water from a rock at Horeb. Moses is a man who called down manna from heaven. Moses is a man who appeared with the glory of the Lord on Mount Sinai. Moses is a man who brought forth water from a rock at Kadesh. Moses is a man who ascended Mount Sinai and received the Ten Commandments from God. Moses is a man who saw the back parts of God. Moses is a man who made his face shine after being in the presence of God. And yet, and yet the Bible describes him as simply the servant of the Lord. With all he did in his life, he is simply the servant of the Lord. That is what we should all aspire to. Recently, there has been a massive trend on the Internet where more and more people are claiming to have gone to heaven or hell. When listening to such things, be very careful that the person is not espousing doctrines of devils. I mention this because a member of my church recently showed me a video of a young man who claimed to have gone to both heaven and hell, and the things which he stated contradicted the word of God. The truth is, God can take someone to hell or heaven because he is God. He is not held accountable to me or you. However, our authority should be rooted in the Bible and not someone's personal experience. People's personal experiences do not trump the word of God. Be careful that you are not listening to a doctrine of devils. The safest thing to do is to stick to your Bible. What did Father Abraham say to the rich man when he died, went to hell, and attempted to send a message back to his brothers on earth? Luke 16, 29, 31. Abraham sigheth unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. The word of God is your final authority. If a human being says something contrary to the word of God, throw what they said out the window. If the most beautiful, holy angel approaches you saying anything outside of the word of God, throw it out the window. Satan and his demons know how to manipulate us, and that's why the doctrines of demons are so effective. Think about how long he has been around. Consider how long Satan and his demons have been on this earth, how many different generations of human beings they have deceived over the centuries. I am sure that over the decades, Satan and his demons have come to know human beings very well. I remember talking to a man who used to train dogs. Although he couldn't directly speak with the dogs, 
He had worked with them for so long and studied them so thoroughly that he had a certain intuition about dogs. Satan and his demons are intelligent beings, wiser and smarter than you and I. When we delve deeply into understanding the nature and scope of deceptive practices, we realize that the doctrines of demons are crafted with the intention of leading people away from the truth. The only way to safeguard ourselves from such deceit is by being grounded in an unwavering foundation, which is the Word of God. By consistently immersing ourselves in the scriptures, we not only gain knowledge but also cultivate discernment. Reading the Bible equips us with a spiritual compass, directing us towards the righteous path. Regularly studying the sacred texts makes us familiar with God's teachings, promises, and commandments. This familiarity acts as our shield, protecting us from falsehoods that may come wrapped in seemingly innocent or logical arguments. Furthermore, this consistent engagement with God's Word nurtures our spiritual intuition. When we're deeply rooted in His teachings, our souls develop a heightened sensitivity to things that don't align with His principles. Just as a seasoned musician can instantly detect a false note in a symphony, a heart steeped in divine teachings can immediately sense any deviation from the holy doctrines. In a world full of distractions and myriad voices each clamoring for attention, it's easy to get swayed by eloquent arguments that appear sound on the surface but are fundamentally flawed. That's where the importance of knowing God's Word comes into play. When we are acquainted with what God says on any given subject, any variation or contradiction to that will immediately send up a red flag, warning us of potential deceit. In essence, to truly identify and combat the doctrines of demons, one must be fortified with knowledge and understanding of the divine word. Just as a building with a strong foundation can withstand storms, a believer fortified with scripture can resist the onslaught of deceptive teachings. The Bible is not just a book, it's a living tool of defense and guidance for all who seek to walk in the truth amidst a world filled with illusions. Satan and his demons, with their millennia of experience, have perfected the art of deception, making it even more crucial for believers to ground themselves in the scriptures. Only by consistently immersing oneself in God's word can one develop the discernment to identify and combat these demonic doctrines and remain steadfast in their faith.